What's up ladies and gents, this is Casey Kid coming at you with another Destiny video. Here we are in week 4 I believe, we're doing the challenge of elders, the sigil. We want to get those high scores, we want to go get those packages from Varix. So what I want to do is just go over some of the tips for this week to get the high score, show you my loot, and show you that no matter how Destiny goes, you are not going to be having as bad of a day as this poor Vex. Poor stuck Stan right here, stuck in the wall. And yeah, that's just an unfortunate series of events. So if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and smack that like button and subscribe to the channel. So this week, it's super week. Super week for getting the extra points. And honestly, I thought this was going to be pretty tricky as far as being able to utilize a specific strategy for getting those supers out, getting those high scores. But you know what? By doing the stuff that I'm going to talk about in this video, we actually managed to two-cycle the challenge of the Prison of Elders, so we were able to get our 90,000 points in just two runs. We had about 43,000 points the first run, and after that I was like, you know what, if we just play this a little bit smarter, I think we can get enough to where we only are going to have to do this two times on one character. And sure enough, on this specific run, we ended up with 47,000 points. So we had 90,660 points after our two runs, which was just enough to collect that second package from Varix. And boom, we were done. We didn't need to go in for a third try. And I think that's really nice. I think anybody would say that being able to save themselves a third run is probably a really good thing. Not that the challenge of Elders is difficult, and not that you might not want to farm for your ghost or your class item or your exotic special weapons, but it's just something to save time, especially if you want to do this on all three of your characters. So first up, we have the Overmind Minotaur, and we've already faced this boss in the Challenge of Elders. He's nothing like the Minotaur boss that we faced back in the original Prison of Elders. That one was extremely difficult. Whenever he put you in a detainment bubble, you had only a few seconds to get out before your health pretty much completely drained and you died. This one, there's plenty of time. In fact, I've been detained, my health all the way regen, I've had no problems bursting out of it. So he's really not as difficult as the original bosses, so you shouldn't have any problem with him. Now let's talk about some strategies that you might be using for your different characters. Number one, you can already tell I'm rocking out the bad juju. I was thinking that maybe with the bad juju and the obsidian mind that I might have some really good luck with generating my super a lot. And that's probably true. You might even be better suited with shatter instead of the vortex grenade that I was using just to give you a little bit wider of a distance whatever you're throwing out your nova bomb. But you really can't go wrong, your Nova Bomb is going to decimate the enemies that it touches anyway, because it's not like you're facing the major enemies. So what I was doing was I was rocking out the Obsidian Mind and the Bad Juju, hoping to generate my super a lot. But we had Devil Dog in here who was actually on a Stormcaller, and I think that he actually helped to generate more super kills generate more orbs than I was actually doing, so just something to keep in mind. You might be better served to run in here with your Warlock on Stormcaller as opposed to the Voidwalker, but Bad Juju is still probably your number one option that you would want to use. Now moving on to round number two, we have a familiar foe in Psylocke. Though the one thing with this battle that's different from all the others is all the enemies in here have shields, so that's actually going to make your battle a little bit trickier. Those enemies do not fall down easily. There are loads of void shields all over the place. Now thankfully, I was on my void walker, and if you do happen to have a void melee, you will be able to one-shot these shielded enemies because we have brawler on. So brawler plus your void melee ability means that you're gonna be able to one-shot those enemies. So if you get in close, go ahead and melee them. Feel free, you're not going to be in too much trouble anyway because they're just gonna fall down. Obviously the witches are another story, you always have to watch out for the witches because they can be a pain in the butt. Let's real quickly talk about the other characters. You can see that we have Poojin here, he is on his hunter and he's on his night stalker. That's because he can tether the enemies and hopefully generate some orbs for us. That's always a good thing. Generating orbs is probably one of the key things. In fact, if I was playing on a titan, I'd probably use a defender titan as well and make sure to pop my bubble around the enemies that could shoot at it while having on the perk to generate extra orbs whenever your bubble takes significant damage. So that means that you could generate your two orbs plus an additional three orbs from getting damage taken from the bubble while you're hiding inside the bubble, getting some extra weapons of light boost or blessing of light boost from the bubble. So that's probably a pretty nice thing to use for your titan. 
while generating orbs for your other teammates. Your warlocks are probably going to be your real killers. Like I said, you can see Devil right there just running around like a maniac with his Stormcaller, just killing absolutely everything. The Voidwalker, you have to be a little bit more particular in trying to hit your one-shots. I probably did a bad job right there. I didn't realize that there was going to be three more enemies over here. They would have been better suited as being my target for my super, but we were still able to generate enough points in here. Now one other thing that we're doing, and you might have noticed it just a little bit, is sometimes I'll just put off some pot shots on an enemy and I will leave it alone. Because assists are going to really help you gain that maximum score possible. Sometimes it's nice to just put in a couple shots on an enemy and let your teammates finish them off so that you get those bonus assist points. That was one thing that we didn't really do on our first run, and I said, you know what, if we focus on this just a little bit for our second run, we should be able to get enough points, and we did. We ended up gaining 4,000 more points, which let us go right over the top and let us get the 90,000 points in two runs. As far as the last boss, here we are in the Cabal stage, and it's just a big Cabal taking guy, and there's really nothing special about him. He doesn't really have anything special that you really have to worry about. He's got his normal Cabal Stomp if you get in too close, and he shoots off some Purple Blasts, and he shoots off those Axion Darts. Honestly, he is really not that tricky. You should just be focusing on everything you can do to maximize your points against all of these enemies. So supers are your number one thing. The supers are what's going to get you the most points. You're going to get your super kill points, and you're going to gain points for generating the orbs. After that, precision kills are king. Then you can worry about your melees or grenade kills. Finally, just normal kills give you the least amount of points. But again, assists kind of get thrown in there, and they pretty much double up the points of almost any kill that you end up doing. So they are really, really useful. And it seems like all the enemies are pretty much health gated as far as whenever they spawn in adds. So if your enemy is down really, really low and there are no other adds in there, you might as well just finish them off because he's not going to spawn in anything additional. As you can see right here, we're already at 42,000 points, plus we're still going to be getting the points for killing the boss, so we're getting in really close. As these Cabal come up, I just do a couple shots at them in their legs, I'm going to run away from them, I'm going to let one of my teammates finish them off, hopefully I'll get 75 points for an assist. Whether they kill them or not, that means that we're getting an additional 75 points per enemy. Again, just shooting them a little bit to weaken them up. They're just drawing over here. If my teammates don't happen to get over and get them, I just throw out a grenade or do something. You can see right there, I'm just racking up the assist points. And assist points aren't sexy or anything like that. You're not going to feel like some uber powerful guy with the assist, but they are going to help your score. Every single assist is basically free points. It's basically increasing the value of any target in this by whatever the assist value is for the particular round. So all of these assists, they're just free points that I just happen to put in a couple of shots, I weaken the enemy, somebody else finished them off, whether they did a precision hit, whether they did a grenade, whether they did a melee, or just standardly kill them, it doesn't really matter. So as we wipe out the rest of those enemies, we're just gonna take one final look around the arena, see if there's anything else there. It doesn't look like there is. As I mentioned, at this low of health, he is not going to spawn in any additional enemies. If we have a super right now, it's perfect time to go ahead and utilize it. Devil popped his Stormcaller, and he's just walking around to see if there's anything at all. There's not, so zap. <laughs> Goodbye, Cabal. And you can see with that kill, we got 47,000 points in this particular run. With the 43,000 that we had before, that crossed our 90,000 barrier means we can go back to Varix after just two runs and turn in both of our packages and get rewarded. So I ended up nabbing a Her Memory and a Keeper's Mind. Now we just need to take a look at them and see what our light levels are and what kind of perks we ended up nabbing. So this is actually the first Her Memory that I got. It's the slower firing auto rifle with nice impact like the Suros. Hand laid stock. So this is pretty interesting. It's got crowd control, hand laid stock, and grenadier. Really not that bad. I think I would have rather had Braced Frame than Hand Laid Stock because Braced Frame won't affect my range. But this doesn't look so bad. It looks like it's going to have some pretty nice stability. What do you think about her memory? As far as my helmet, it's the Keeper's Mind. And I just don't like the look of it as much as the one that I'm already wearing. And as far as the perks go, I think I like the perks that I have on my particular helmet better too. Though both of these do come at intellect and discipline, 
even though this is the only one that I have as far as the Prison of Elders helmets, I think I'm just going to infuse it into my Spectar helmet, because again, this one has Chroma, though I don't have Chroma equipped on this one, because it's relatively new, and I just didn't happen to have any Chroma in my inventory, though I will put on a red Chroma for this one, and I like Ashes to Assets, that's really nice, Intellect Discipline, I'm just going to infuse the helmet I just got, and boom, we're going to have our first 335 helmet right here. So that's what I got from the Prison of Elders challenge mode. What did you end up nabbing? Did you have any problems this week? You probably didn't. Anyway, guys and gals, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, smack that like button and subscribe to the channel. Check out these awesome videos. Good luck with your raids, your drops, your challenge of elders, and I'll see you around in Destiny. I dedicate this to her memory.